This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, guys, so we've got us a power burner here that I just set up uh, about a week ago. And today we're working at a little microbrewery. Never worked on one of these before, but the controls and stuff are pretty common. It helps when you know a little something about it, but we've got a control system here. We've got this thing running. We've got the different kettles. And what we had was we had this one over here, which actually takes the hops and stuff like that and gets it hot. You've got your other tanks where they store stuff at. And then this one here is just for hot water, this next one over. So what we're doing today is we're going to double check it with the Testo 300 here. And we're gonna give it an old test over. This here had a control module that got burned up. So we got that redone. It's running right now, melted out some plugs. I had to use a washer to make a plug. Can't get half this crap from the uh, supplier. We're also going to be checking our draft there on that, which is built right into the Testo 300, which is pretty sweet. You don't need a separate gauge for it. So we're gonna go ahead and get that turned on. That should kick up and boot up. I've been wanting to do a video on this thing. I'm not gonna go real deep into it. The 300 here has Bluetooth capability and Wi-Fi both, has lithium ion batteries in it. Touch screen, uh, pretty indestructible. I mean, it's really tough. It isn't uh, like a smartphone type deal. It's actually, it doesn't give the lines or nothing like that. The control module that melted down on the one that we're getting ready to check out here is uh, right there. It got a little warm, so I've gotta go get a uh, manual reset to install it. Now the thing is kind of interesting. This has actually got Android, so you can put a passcode in here. So if somebody steals it, hopefully it helps protect it a little bit. The startup on this thing is really quick. Give it a sec here. There we go, set up for natural gas. Here's all my specs, here's my draft. So when we hit play, which is how you start this thing going, it's gonna zero it out. So let's go ahead i plug this in, that way it's ready to go. Nice, simple connection. You see the two things here, match them up. Shove it in, twist it, lock it. We're gonna hit play. It's gonna say zeroing is needed. That is your draft. So should zero the draft out. Here we go, cool. And should go zero, zero, zero. So this has been running for a little while. This is just moderately long enough that, you know, we're able to Get what we need and not trip over it and everything else. So let's go ahead and let's just set it on the ground that way it's safe. Go ahead and stick this in here. There we go. That is right in there, about the halfway mark. You can screw that in if you want to make it nice and tight, and we're able to check our draft. They don't need a lot of draft. We got 0.06, so we can actually adjust that just a little bit go for point, point 0.1 point 0.1 was about what we needed the more we go up the chimney the more we're, we're losing so if we push that shut there we go so we're shoot shutting that now you want to make sure when you're checking this you want to make sure you check it before you go to the draft control because you don't want it diluted with oxygen from the room so as you can see we're running right at about 390 stack See what our parts per million of CO. We scroll down here, oxygen CO is there. Now we're burning a little dirty. Um, when I push that shut, that actually caused the CO to go up higher, so we weren't pulling up air in. So we're gonna need to double check our air here and make sure that it's open and then we're getting enough that we need. So we just checked our burner on the side here to see what our air was. Generally, if the CO is high, it's in complete combustion. So you either need to adjust your gas or you need to adjust your air. If it's not burning clean, you probably need more air. You gotta see where your gas is at too though. So let's go ahead and flip this thing on and see if we can look at the air shutter. It's right there, and it's wide open. So I'm gonna get a mirror out and double check that, but I guarantee you, if I cut the air back, uh, is going to go up even higher. So it's not burning very clean. Now, things could have been damaged, possibly, when all this other stuff got melted. So we may need to take a good look at it. Now, as far as the draft, you can see we got 0.02. 
Usually you don't need a lot. You can go almost from neutral to just a slight negative from what I was told on the other burner. This one here, I have very little to no specs on it at all. Pretty much all the documentation has been burned off or I don't have much on it, which kind of sucks. But that's what the analyzer is able to do for you. It can tell you whether it's burning clean or not. It can check your draft, which is pretty awesome. We've got our excess air, our efficiency, O2, and CO2. All right there. So we could actually probably lower the gas pressure possibly. We've got to check it and see where we're at. And um, see if it's maybe over firing, putting too much fuel in. If you got too much fuel and not enough air, it's going to burn dirty. So you got to have the right mixture. Let's go ahead and check that and see where we're at. Which I got a plug here and I got your traditional port right here. All right, I can tell you right now why we're running so dirty. They got that cotton picking exhaust fan on again, and that is what caused all the problems to begin with. They claim they're going to shut that thing down when they're bre brewing, and unfortunately, it's running right now, so I need to shut that down. Let's go back over here and see how it's burning now. I didn't know they were running that. So I turned it off. Holy throws everything off. Look at that, my CO's going down. I was wondering why everything was going to crap. See, if you can't vent out normal, it's gonna throw everything off. Draft's pretty much about the same. 0.07 is about where we were at before. But it just completely was throwing off our burn factor. And if they're gonna run that at the same time, they're gonna have the same problem again. Now, what I'm gonna do is mount me a manual reset limit right on top of the burner. And I'm gonna wire it in on the low voltage side of things and have it trip out. That way it kills power to the gas valve which then eventually it'll lock out the uh, uh, control module and it's going to be low voltage so I don't have to worry about doing all kinds of fancy wiring. Um, that way we can keep her safe. But you can see we're generally going to need to keep under 100 parts per million and we're already coming down to 65 here and we're on the right track. But yeah, that, that stupid exhaust system was screwing everything up. So it's really important to know that and that's why you want to make sure you have an analyzer to check it. There's no way I can see how this thing's burning without that analyzer. There's no inspection port or anything like that for me to actually see what it's doing. They had to put the box on here because they had gotten water on it and it destroyed this electronics once before. So that's, it's been an ongoing battle here. Okay, on this other one, I went ahead and wrote my specs on the inside here because I wanted to make sure we we're safe. This is a modulating burner, so it's capable of running from 1% all the way up to 100%. I seen this company Power Flame Burner uh, down there in uh, Atlanta at the AHR Expo and uh, they were pretty good on getting me the information I needed. Uh, had to have my control guy come over and help me out with this here. Somehow these buttons all got whacked out. We've got your direction and your uh, amount of rotation that you're able to do and that was all out of whack. We've got everything marked now so if it ever gets screwed with we know where it was originally versus where it was before. And uh, like I said, I just wired that on the low voltage circuit with the pressure switch. And that way, if it does what they did before, before it melts this, because literally melt that plastic. So you know we were up over 300 degrees area, uh, 250, 300 degree area. It was starting to melt everything and it, it just totally ruined everything. So I'm gonna be adding the same type of switch here to the other one. And it's just an extra peace of mind so that we don't have to go through this. Because trying to repair something you hardly ever see, Kind of sucks. Okay, let's go back over here, see how she's running. We'll run for a little bit. We got 24 parts per million. See that? And our stack is 0.1 inch draft. Makes it so simple. But yeah, it's this thing's so simple. And then you're able to print it. Now, if I want to check gas pressure, I can actually check it in the device. Um, I haven't done it with the gas yet, but I have done it with the temperature. This can do up to four probes, which is pretty slick. Without the exhaust running, we're setting pretty. As soon as that exhaust runs, we're gonna be in bad news bears. I went ahead and got everything marked there, what we had for our specs. When we come over here to this, you can tap on the icon of what you wanna do. You can come right down and you can do differential temperature. You can switch and it's gonna look for your probes right here and you'll be able to do differential so if you're doing a boiler you'll be able to do that right there if you're wanting to do differential pressure so you're doing static what have you 
You can do it right here, inch of the water column. Uh, I believe it only is going to do one, though. I ain't sure why they got the other. So it's really going to be more gas pressure. And then smoke number. You're going to have to do this manually with a traditional smoke uh, device. And you're going to have to enter your information from what I'm seeing here. Draft measurement. Should pull up exactly what we already got. Well, it's not it's not measuring anything because it stopped. So when I went into here, it actually zeroed everything out. So yeah, if we hit play again, which means start, it's going to have to re-zero out the uh, pressure port. So all you got to do is pull that out. So this is purely for draft. So I got it out. Hit play going to zero so they say remove it don't worry about whether it's co2 still in there or whatever there we go draft point zero zero four pick that back in there and she's good to go we're still running point oh nine to point one area which is what they kind of told me the last time to put it at and then it starts recalculating again simple as that hot spot just uh, tells you what your fleet temp is graphics is kind of neat so it can show you what you were doing trending wise which makes it pretty nice and convenient. And then you can email it, which, you know, once you've got what you want, you hit pause, it's gonna save that information that you've got. So hit pause. Now you can save it. You gotta make a um, new customer if you need to. So you hit new customer, enter the information you got here, and it's gonna save all that. Then you're gonna be able to uh, save it to the device and you're gonna be able to also email it. So here's emailing right here. You gotta have all that information for your service provider as far as to be able to send it. Second screen sends it right over to the phone. Yep, so that's what we got. And this does have a magnet on the back side, which we picked up some of the shavings, which makes it nice to stick, which probably won't stick to any of this stuff. Uh, won't stick pretty much anything in here except for maybe this. So as you're working, you can stick it right there on the side, do your thing. It's done, hit the power button. Oops, if you hit a fast power button, it ends up uh, just briefly shutting down to uh, low energy mode, which is gonna run your battery down. If you truly wanna shut it off, hit the button, hold it, power off, yes, simple as that. <laughs> there is a lot of things I need to learn about it yet. I haven't done a lot as far as reports and stuff. I usually just write it down on my paperwork. Uh, it can run it to a printer, printer set right here. I didn't see a purpose for it. Um, you got room here for your charger, which this is a USB charging cable there a little bit of uh, red silicone to plug your hole and uh, got some of your extra uh, filters there on the back here you can flip this thing down and there's your tubing for your pressure switch which i've got my uh, meter uh, bluetooth uh, testo probe for gas meter gauge which they included free with the purchase of this and uh, so I've got that mounted back behind there, which is kind of convenient. And like I said, you can get that in there. The thing has built-in Wi-Fi, but this little adapter here gives me the Bluetooth capabilities, which is kind of, you know, you're gonna need that for your probes. Like I said, guys, I've got to learn a little bit more on it. I've only used it probably about four or five times, mainly get my oxygen, O2, CO2 uh, levels and write them down and move on. I know what my normal level should be at and then move on as far as the extra features, as far as using the probes and emailing and all that stuff. I've tinkered with it, but I really haven't had to get too deep into it, but I wanted to just kind of give you a brief overview of how everything works, what it has available on it. It's been a really neat unit. The battery life seems pretty good. It charges pretty fast, and uh, the sensor life on this thing uh, is pretty phenomenal. Warranty's really good on it too. If you guys are looking to get one, check it out at TrueTech Tools. Use promo code SURVIVAL to save yourself 8% off, which is quite a savings when you're talking the money these run. For the most part, they're pretty well priced in line with uh, any of the other quality products that are out there. Our own shop ended up purchasing one, and then I've got this one for myself. So it's been a really cool to have on my truck when I need it. It doesn't do you a lot of good when it's sitting back at the shop. So I was able to do the check on this right here while I was there and know up front that, hey, something's not right. So obviously it must be something, it's gonna be fuel, or it could be a draft, which the draft didn't look too horribly bad, but obviously it threw things off. Like I said, they know up front that they can't run this when they're running the exhaust hoods. Uh, they need to bring more air into the building. They know they need to make up air unit. That's all in the works, but that's what I did. I wanted to give you guys a brief overview and that's what we did. So thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the next one later.